My name is Shepard Siegel, and I am the uh, director of school engagement for the states of Washington and Alaska. I've lived in Seattle uh, more than 20 years, and I was the career tech ed director for Seattle Public Schools until I came to work for Project Lead the Way five months ago. It was a fairly easy decision for me to make because I had been bringing Project Lead the Way engineering programs into Seattle Public Schools for 15 and 16 years. And I'm proud to say that Ballard High School was the first high school in the state to adopt it in 1998. It's still going strong there. And the way I've seen teachers respond to the training, the way I've seen students respond to the education, made me a true and passionate believer in Project Lead the Way. However, I could not have given a better introduction to Project Lead the Way than uh, what Mr. Belcher just gave to you as an introduction to STEM. Um, and I met some of your teachers before I came in. I saw some of the student projects. There's so much enthusiasm here. And uh, it's very exciting, I think, for the move forward that y'all are doing right now. And uh, I think you're very lucky to have the kind of principal leadership that you do. So I'm going to introduce you to Project Lead the Way. I'll try to do a little bit of focus on the intro to engineering design. But I want to kind of you to get the big picture because we are not your typical organization. Uh, right now I'm more comfortable behind the podium. You may see me walk out as we move on. Don't be alarmed if I do. But um, we began in 97. We are the nation's leading provider for STEM. And our mission is very simple. Prepare students for the global economy. And you see this problem, and Mr. Belcher made the point about how poignant that problem is in the state of Washington. And, I, and as a Washingtonian, I hate seeing these great jobs going to folks from out of state. I really want to see our students graduating from high school, graduating from college, and getting these great STEM jobs that our state's economy provides. So here's where we're different. We don't just sell you a curriculum and then we're gone. In fact, we give the curriculum away for free. We are a true nonprofit. We are in this to see high quality STEM education occur in the schools. So what we provide you with is the curriculum, but we are also very proud of our ability to uh, train teachers and offer them professional development. And we have two university affiliates in this state. We work through universities to do teacher training. One is Seattle University, which is where the engineering training takes place. The other is Washington State University. Oh yeah! Go! Ben Hawk! Ben Hawk! And uh, the other is Washington State University Spokane, where we do training for our new biomedical program, which I'll also talk about. Also, we're an engaged network. So we're just beginning a relationship with you. Once teachers have been trained and the courses are offered, they are tuned into a network of thousands of teachers all over the country who are doing our program. So you do the training, your teacher, you've learned eight out of 10 lesson plans, but lesson plans nine and 10 are driving you nuts. You can't quite figure them out. You go online to our virtual academy. Within minutes, probably, some teacher somewhere else in the country is gonna go, oh yeah, I had that problem too. Here's how I worked on it. We have ongoing professional development. I'll be around, I'm here to create ongoing lasting relationships and it's very exciting for me. And so that's the engaged network that kicks in. That network also includes employers and we've got some big employers in the state of Washington I'm hoping to recruit, but in other parts of the country, uh, Chevron is a huge uh, uh, supporter of Project Lead the Way, uh, Toyota. It also in states like Kentucky, Texas, and uh, California, and there are other large, uh, large corporations that are making real significant contributions to Project Lead the Way, and that's part of the network, as well as uh, philanthropic foundations. So we're the leading provider of this curriculum and the professional development, as I told you. That's over 3,000 teachers a year that we train, and the network. So you don't see much lecturing when you walk into a Project Lead the Way classroom. You don't see textbooks. You see kids on computers. You see kids working in teams. You see kids working on projects. And you see the teacher setting them loose on those things and facilitating and be more of a resource. There's occasional lecturing, but very little. Um, once again, Mr. Belcher did a 
good a job and better than I could have of describing what you'll see when you walk into one of our classrooms. So Gateway to Technology is our middle school program for grades six through eight. They're nine week units, and these are some of the areas that they're in. I was just talking to uh, some of your middle school teachers before I came in tonight and shared excitement with them, and these are the actual units. Now what happened is we were just engineering education, now we're into biomedical as well. So you, you won't see biomedical on this list, but we're adding a biomedical middle school unit called medical detectives. And I think as the years go by, we'll see more and more middle school units um, in biomedical. But we will have one, and it's being piloted 2013-14. It'll be available 2014-15 for anyone. And here's pathway to engineering. And this is, what, again, what Mr. Belcher referred to. And these are the courses. So the foundation courses are IED, Intro to Engineering Design, and Principles of Engineering. And then if you do that, if you do the full meal deal, so to speak, you would do IED, these are full year courses. You would do IED as a freshman, Principles of Engineering as a sophomore, and then working with your school and what your capacity is, a student would, in a perfect world, would look at any of these other engineering courses for their junior year, and then on the very bottom, Engineering Design and Development is simply a, like a senior project course. And this is where students do things like invent things and manage projects. And we have had high school seniors awarded patents before they were awarded their high school diploma. So exciting things happen in that, in that senior project course. We're ways off, but we're going to get there. We also adding a brand new course. This fall it will be piloted in computer science and software engineering. It'll really have the Project Lead the Way thumbprint on it and that it's going to be very project oriented. We're more concerned with teaching students what computational thinking is than in teaching a particular language, computer language. And then we have been doing biomedical sciences for a few years now and this is what that explores. And these are the four courses. This one is a little bit more straightforward. The first freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. There's just one course for each grade level. And what we do is we do collect a fee annually and that fee supports all the, uh, su supports the people like myself who are gonna be there to make sure the program's going well. It supports, one reason I've become such a believer in it is that our, these courses are continuously reviewed and upgraded and redone. So we don't plop the course down and then leave it be. We're constantly rewriting the curriculum and keeping up with the cutting edge developments in engineering and science. And I've been to our headquarters in Indianapolis several times now, and the people I've met, I mean, they're former teachers, and they're former really, really good teachers, and they're the ones that are writing this curriculum and then rewriting and rewriting it. So that is what your participation fee pays for. It pays for keeping this program up to date. We're going to have a new learning management system. We give exams that are, that are required. There's end of course exams. There's the e-catalog and reporting tools. And by the way, that computer science course, we are working actively with the college board, so it will be an AP course as well. So these, these participation fees, and I know our administrators are generally more concerned, but it's your tax dollars that they're spending, so I didn't want to share that with you. That, so for example, in engineering, you, you pay $3,000 a year in a participation fee. But you're getting, because we're brokers for all the vendors, we get you huge discounts. And you're getting, just right off the bat, besides supporting the organization, you're getting $6,100 <laughs> worth of software licenses that you were going to need anyway. So right away, it's really, uh, the fee is actually saving your school money, not costing it money. So I told you about medical detectives and computer science, and we're also going to be doing an elementary program. So we're piloting that this coming fall, and so we will also have K-6 uh, STEM education coming at you um, in 2014-15. This is, I like including this chart because it talks about the difference between AP and Project Lead the Way, and also if you, you look at you create this matrix of any course and what's the difference between high rigor, low rigor, high context, and low context. So what you get with Project Lead the Way is you get high rigor as you would in an AP course,
but you also get high context. The students are solving real world problems. They're bringing in guest speakers who have the STEM careers in this area, talking about what they really deal with, whether it's Microsoft or Boeing or the manufacturing sector down in the Soto area of Seattle or, or the, the, the industry that you have in this part of the county or even the eastern part of the state, that the context is always there for students. And so this is why I've seen it work so well and that whether a student can succeed in an AP course or not, many of them who have struggled in an AP course have great success in Project Lead the Way, including and especially students with mild disabilities who may have perceptual differences that make the conventional classroom difficult. Once they can start using their hands and solving a math and a science problem in an applied way, they take off and their true genius is revealed. We use only the latest stuff. We'll be using Autodesk Inventor, um, which is a state of the art. You're going to need big computers. A few years from now, it'll all be in the cloud, but right now, Autodesk Inventor is so powerful, the cloud doesn't serve it that well. They're going to get higher scores. Um, I really appreciated, again, what Mr. Belcher said about he wanted to get students into those blue classes, the AP Physics, the AP Calculus, and Calculus. The success story of the year is Toppenish High School. You might everyone know where Toppenish is, out near Yakima. So this is a high poverty school that has struggled academically for many, many years. In a high school of under a thousand students, he's got nine Project Lead the Way teachers. The principal is the National High School Principal of the Year. In no a slight measure due to using Project Lead the Way, he's also a really great principal, obviously, and he's got really great teachers. But he now has many students in his school taking AP Calculus, taking AP Physics. And, and he credits Project Lead the Way with getting students to that place where that's reachable for them. So it's right in line with everything Mr. Belcher has been telling you earlier this evening. Um, our, what happens is I spend a lot of time with engineering deans and talking to the universities. And basically, the story for engineering schools and engineering in the universities is that they have no problem filling the freshman classes. But very not enough of those students complete the degree. So we're wasting a lot of resource with students who think they want to be engineering majors and they find that out in college when it's really late, they've wasted their parents' money on tuition and they decide to do a business major before they're a junior, which is fine, but it's a very expensive way to figure that out. What Project Lead the Way does is it fills those freshman seats with students who know what they're getting into who are ready for an engineering major. And the data that you are looking at on the screen shows you how the students who came out of Project Lead the Way were more likely to complete their degree. I don't want to take more time than I was promised. Am I in trouble yet? Okay. All right, a couple more minutes. So uh, some of the stuff I'm going to just move through very quickly. This is about certification and national recognition. That'll come later. And the assessments that we give and the improvements we're doing to the assessment uh, uh, program. Everything we do is aligned to the Common Core state standards, which you may have been hearing about in science, in, in math and language arts. And when the next generation science standards are finalized, we'll probably be the first ones who already have our curriculum aligned with the next generation science standards. I already talked about how often we review and the new uh, medical detectives, computer science, elementary. This is our growth. I'm just really proud of the fact that way over there on the left in 1998, Ballard High School was in there somewhere, and it was uh, that 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 um, and it was really a mentor to me who said, "You really ought to be doing this stuff." Back in '97, '98, and look at how it's grown. <laughs> so the blue there is all the engineering courses. The gray is the middle school, which has grown, and the red is the biomedical science, whose growth is about to take off. And these are the number of schools. So we are, when I say we're the leading provider. These numbers bear that out. So again, I, um, I've known uh, your career tech ed director for many years. I've been making acquaintances with folks. I'm in, it's an ongoing relationship. I'm really uh, a Washingtonian first, and, uh, and I'm really proud to be able to help bring Project Lead the Way to more.